All right, uh, Marawa TV, just give me a quick wrap of what's happened within Bafana Bafana. They're just about to pack and leave for the airport here uh, at their hotel. Velile Nyandu, a man who has been sitting with us here, analyzing a couple of the games as well. Uh, Velile, always good to see you. Bafana Bafana packing. Did you expect them to be packing at this stage? Yeah, Rob. Um, after the performance that we saw against uh, Nigeria, not really what we expected, especially coming from the game against Egypt. Um, against um, a Nigerian team that looked refreshed uh, after those changes that were made by Kush uh, Benadro um, especially looking at the boy like uh, Chikweze I, I watched him for Villarreal in the Villa Liga this season and I've always maintained on social media that this boy is going to do something special uh, at the half court Pity that something special had to start against us <laughs> uh, so looking at uh, the team that we lost to of a Nigerian team DD and a depth of controlling that midfield um, I thought on the night we were second best um, it was always going to be difficult for us uh, and I don't think we did the things that we were supposed to do in the right way right. and it was sweet revenge for Nigeria. Alright, talk about that sweet revenge they did all the hard work South Africa being criticised mainly for not utilising or rotating a lot of the players in hindsight Stuart Baxter uh, mentioning it, that he could have changed things but the players had given a top performance against the Egyptians which made it difficult for him to enforce the changes but do you think though in time management and utilising the bench would that be one of the downfalls of the national team? I think it was clear from the group stages um, how was working around um, and using the players and um, you take the, the issue of Roach for instance, I felt that okay maybe in the first game there was a plan that he was working with uh, coming from the camps and um, going to the Ivory Coast game and it didn't work with the opening game um, because we saw that he brought Ronald Williams and also brought uh, Mabu as well but I felt maybe uh, he could have brought someone like Roach against Namibia um, because Lodge was playing against um, in, Nam in Namibia he was playing against PSL players yeah. and he has someone who is seen as the king of the PSL players in this particular season so how best to unleash him in a, in a game like that he knows uh, the, some of the trainers that is coming to this so from that end I think also maybe uh, being too wide dimensional in their approach and um, because you know that uh, someone who relies too much on the transition uh, way of doing things uh, and as we saw at, against Nigeria because they were playing for the third time yeah. against Milano. Now he knows that if you want to catch him, give him the ball. Yeah. Uh, don't run at him with the ball because that's how we kill them in war. But give him the ball and then we'll see what happens. Not was, nothing was happening there. Yeah. Hence, in the group stages, we finished two games without a single shot on target because we had no plan to yeah. And you know what? They are good players um, in the camp, but to those good players talk to in this game plan, I'm not sure. So. There was a time when Stuart Baxter mentioned that he couldn't select a, a person like Lars Frelsbeck, uh, mainly and because due to the fact that he had not worked with them before. Do you think we're any step closer now, very late, to understanding, to knowing, to feeling that Lars Prelsberg is this type of player who can be proposed? He was given very minimal time. So yeah. there, there was this camp um, in, in, in Pulukwane where we were preparing to play World Cup qualifier against uh, uh, Senegal. Remember that yeah. disputed game yeah. uh, of Mr. One. Lamtier? <laughs> yeah, so it was it was there where I first saw him and I was really not convinced. Yeah. Um, I will not dispute that he's a top goal scorer the club. He helped them to get promotion to Dutch Yard DFC. But uh, for international material, I'm not sure yet. And I think I've been proven right um, even in, in this tournament as well. We saw him, he got a chance, even he, he came on and with the aerial strength that is yeah. brought but still was even struggling to win those aerial goals as well. No, no, no. I, I think we've got better strikers. All right, just as a final one, uh, really, because everybody now talks about the, the, the way forward. Uh, major tournaments like this uh, uh, are meant to make big decisions, and big decisions will probably be made. We, we didn't go beyond the quarterfinals. Does Stuart Baxter maintain his job? 
if you look at what has been happening uh, with other countries that have departed this tournament, and uh, this is not even to, to talk about teams that have performed badly or teams that are out early, but uh, if someone like uh, Hever Nard, with everything that is achieved, his, his future is not set in Morocco. Uh, you've seen Emil Amurike, you've seen the coach, uh, the barrier of uh, Uganda linking up with the pyramids. Um, even with our coach, I, I don't think the decision should be set there. But I think the signs have been clear, uh, especially after the first game, when we invited the president to talk about the opening game, uh, where he did say that uh, they need a long term coach yes. with a vision. Yep. Um, someone who will talk to the vision that they had in the two. And unfortunately, you, you see, I've done a review mm -hmm. uh, today, and my review is based on what the coach had been saying mm -hmm. coming to the tournament. When he announced the professional squad, the plan was to have four players from the under team. But we came to the tournament, and we're in the second oldest team in the tournament, and this is a team that had uh, two World Cup under, under, uh, two under 20 World Cup squads yeah. in the last four years. Olympic squad. Chikweze, who scored and got the Man of the Match award against us, played against our team in, 20, in 2015 at under 17 and went to the under 17 World Cup where we also had the same the Mali team that was at this Afghan, when they played in the under 20 earlier this year, they brought some players from the under 20. So he's clearly shown that uh, he's not a long term with the uh, coach. Yes, we will give the coach credit mm -hmm. for our first win in 19 years uh, in the knockout stages and also for taking us here. But when we talk long term, I don't think it fits. And I think also from his side as well, it's been clear that um, he doesn't see himself yet in, in, in the long run. There's been talk of China. Uh, the Kizashiv chapter was also never closed. So it's just that one one of the things is that the, the FA should also be honest with, with this thing. That was he the right choice? Did he meet the criteria that they had set? Because now, if you look at the two, last two coaching appointments, yeah. we settled for coaches who were not really part of what they were looking for. Yeah. Because for me, I think our failure is, is when it comes to technical matters. Yeah. I will tell you about the issue of Mapfish who was the second assistant coach of the scout. He sits on the bench here during our game against Egypt. Cameroon and Nigeria are playing. On the you know? And this is supposed to be the scout. The match performance is scout of the opposition. And at this level you cannot ignore such things. Yeah because when both when the Cameroonians played against the Nigerians, we were all here at the hotel. I remember the game was on television here. Yes. And uh, it was back to back, having taken the lead, having equalized, having fallen behind at off time. We were all here, which you rightfully say, it should have been a more of a vision to say, let's divorce yourself from this, catch you at the stadium because transportation, you know, if we could make it to both, you know what I'm saying? Then go ahead, you watch that game. Because I can guarantee you, Either from Cameroon or Nigeria, yeah. somebody was there yes. watching that news. That's how it operates at this level. And I'm not saying this based on how the things are yeah. it's something that I've seen the goal, how the big clubs are doing it, yeah. um, how when someone is going to play uh, with that, they follow the last three matches of yeah. that, not on TV, they are there. Uh, I can tell you, I've seen even here with Havenda, with the uh, all these other two, two coaches, some of them they even hold themselves to watch the opposition. You know? So at this level in 2019, but, but this I'm also blaming the Safa Technical Department. 
these are the things for me that are going forward. We really need to sort out. Uh, we, we've got the talent yeah. we've shown. Uh, also, I mean, we, the, our league had about 47 players here. Oh. Um, with a squad of 17 locally based players who beat Egypt. So, surely, you see, at this level, it's all about the final matches. Mm. Like you saw how we lost. Right. When the game was won. It's always about the final matches. Yeah. So, we need to perfect those things. Yeah, with we'll them coming into play. If you had to make a call now, finally, Belile, you the SAFA president, what decision do you take on Baxter? Hey, that one is going to be very interesting. No, it can be interesting. Da, da, you da, have to da, does, make that decision. Does Safa have the money to, to pay him out? Or will the coach just go away? Hmm. So, those are the decisions I think. So, the tactics, the tactics are still in force, yes. even in the office? Yes, yes. But okay. when we appoint a coach, we need to appoint the right coach. Who will be the right coach? Let and they the, give it some thought. Let, let the, let the Safa technical department handle it, but the right way this time. All right. He'll be with us up until the end of the tournament, so maybe he might have his thoughts about that. When we get to that stage, I'll give him a bit of time to ponder about it. You never know, in the next 48 hours, it could be crucial for South Africa's future, the technical and team, the, the coaching staff. There's the president, you can answer it. The president is here. <laughs> okay. We'll get Danny Jordan <laughs> to come and chat to us. He's creeping up here behind us. We might have answers. Stick around, Marawa TV.